Hi, welcome to the Retirement Railroad and Matinee Modeling Tip of the Day. I'm Steve and uh, today I'm going to talk about a, uh, a new tool, but it's not really new. Uh, we just don't use it very often as a tool on our railroads. We use it for our railroads, but typically not as a tool. Uh, so, with that, uh, let's uh, switch cameras show you what I'm talking about okay so uh, if you've been following my tips of the day you'll uh, or updates you'll know that um, I put in a new siding back here switch right here a uh, Pico elect uh, large radius electrofrog all right that sweeps around where I can park my uh, bi-level uh, commuter train well, because I have my 47 inch TV that I use as a monitor and a shelf here with all my uh, ancillary uh, video stuff, um, I don't have a clear view back there. And because this is an electrofrog switch, uh, which means the polarity on these two rails see where I'm pointing two inner rails changes uh, with uh, how the switch is thrown so those two rails have to have insulated rail joiners plus I always any siding that I put in I always put in a uh, switch a uh, little micro switch on a panel like I have down here you can't see it but trust me there's a panel down here um, and a little switch the uh, so I can isolate that track uh, so an engine that may be parked out there doesn't uh, sit there and, and run um, or want to try to communicate so with that I uh, have an insulated rail joiner there as well the problem is trying to align those tracks now this joint here aligned real well over here uh, over here everywhere aligned up and the track went together perfectly except right there uh, this one lines up real well because there's a solder joint and re a regular rail joiner here okay but this one having two insulated plastic rail joiners even though it was glued in place and everything, uh, got out of alignment. I'll show you a picture of that. All right, which brings me to the subject of the tool. All right, utilizing your cell phone okay, you can use the camera because I'm old and I can't see where the damn <laughs> plus with all this stuck here I can't see the alignment on those switches and when I first started running my bi-level commuter train right here as you can see all right, uh, when I first tried to go back and forth over that joint I kept getting um, derailments all right. so I knew it was something with how it aligned but from where I'm standing, which is as close as I can get anywhere, I can't see downward to see how those rails are, line, are lining up. So, utilizing the camera and simply getting over the rail joints, Actually, I wanted uh, flash. I can then look and see how the jo rail joints line up. All right. And then, utilizing some simple pliers, I can realign this track back here 
and these joints to match up. And through a series of pictures, which I'm going to show you, uh, I can judge how well my adjustments are until it lines up the way I want and until the train can run across that, uh, that, sw that switch without having any issues. Right. So we'll uh, fire up the old uh, engine, flip the switch, the track is now live. So, now if I did everything right, we should run across it, no problem. And I don't come off come off of there more than uh, around 20 on my uh, throttle. Get a little bit of a jump, but that's more from the gap to the insulated uh, reel joint. But as you can see, I made it across, no issues. Put her back in the barn, so to speak. All right, mission accomplished. Shut down the engine. Now see the track's still alive, and by ice throwing the switch, I isolated that siding. Now the uh, uh, engine, you don't have the engine run. I could have muted it, but it still would be uh, communicating with the DCC so all right so we got the power to the track shut off and everything so that is your tip of the day utilizing your camera that you can reach into areas you can't otherwise see all right take a picture and you get a better idea what's going on and a series of pictures to see how your adjustments work out all right